God, we truly thank you because you have brought us from a mighty, 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 mighty long way. We thank you, God, for our yesterdays. We thank you for our today and our tomorrows because, God, we're depending on you to carry us through every situation. We're depending on you, God. And so now, God, we thank you that it is preaching time. Hallelujah. And we bless your name for that which you're getting ready to do. Now, God, I ask for fresh anointing, fresh wind. Let it blow in this place, starting with me, O oh God. Let it filter its way all the way through every pew in this church. Let it go to the doorkeepers and the musicians. Let it filter up in the balcony to the media department. Let it flow, God, overflow into the city. Let it overflow into this community. Let it overflow to every young boy and every young girl can say that I have a dream as well. God, do as only you can do. Get the glory out of this service. Get the glory out of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. And the people of God say it. The people of God say it. Hallelujah. 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 Thou hand has provided. Yes, God. That's all right, Will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Take it in, y'all. Take it all in. Take it all in. Because he's here right now. Take it all in, y'all. He's here right now. Yes, God. We'll pick me up on this one. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation. Purchase of God, born of his spirit, I've been washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. All the day long, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. I'm going to praise him in trouble, I'm going to praise him when I'm up, I'm going to praise him when I'm down. I'm going to praise him when I have money in the bank. I'm going to praise him when I don't have money in the bank. I'm going to shout hallelujah. I'm going to praise him when I'm sick. I'm going to praise him when I'm tired. This is my, my story. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. This morning, this is my story. This is mine. This is mine, Brother Bean. This is mine. I really came because I really needed a word from the Lord. And, and, and after looking at your surveys, and, and for those of you who turned in your surveys, 
The most amazing thing that I found was that many of you said you wanted to know more about fasting. Fasting, fasting. Fasting is not a very popular subject in the body of Christ. It is indeed for most something that has, is, has become obsolete. But in your reading this morning, we read Matthew 6, 16 and 19. And it said these very words. Matthew is New Testament, which gives us instructions on how to live our lives today. Huh? And this is what Matthew said, not, not Old Testament, because there are some who would argue, Tracy, that we're no longer under the Old Testament law, but now under New Testament law. Amen? So those who would argue, there are theologians who may argue that we don't need to fast. And because of that, I decided, woman of God and, and beloved community of God, to, to travel to the New Testament just in case there was one somebody who was still in the Old Testament and had not yet transferred from the Old to the New, even though we understand it's one book. Amen? So just for your hearing, just for a moment, let me just read again. It says, Matthew 6, 16, And when you fast, do not put on a gloomy face as the hypocrites do, for they neglect their appearance in order to be seen fasting by men. Truly I say to you, they have their reward in full. But you, when you fast, some tra translations left this part out, anoint your, anoint your head and wash your face and comb your hair so that they may not be seen fasting by men, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay. Just for a moment, I want to deal with, I'm looking for my payment. I'm looking for the payment. One of the greatest revivals came through prayer and fasting. And it took place April the 14th, 1906, in Los Angeles, California. Known, no, Los Angeles, California, known as the Azusa Street Revival. In fact, it was right down the street at the Bonnie Bry House. It has been said that under the leadership of Reverend William J. Seymour, the birth of the Pentecostal movement began with only a handful of people. Somebody say, oh, it don't take many. But by the second year, the revival, which started in 1906, by the second year, it had grown to 13,000 people, both black and white in hopes of having a closer walk with Jesus. The growth was so rapid that the members had to move from the Bonnie Bry House to Azusa Street, thus giving birth to one of the most powerful movements known by historians as the catalyst for several, not one, but several denominations, such as the Holiness Church, the Church of God, the Church of God in Christ, the Apostolic, and just to name a few. But today, it is credited with more than 550 million people who trace their ancestry back to that movement. However, it is believed that such power came after Reverend Seymour announced to the congregation, just a few of them, just a few, just like we're sitting here today, just a few, we, just a few. But he announced that they would be going on a 10-day fast. For most people, it is often thought that fasting is viewed as an act that is not necessary in the modern church. However, Tracy, I would beg the difference. Fasting and praying is needed more now than ever before. The combination of prayer and fasting are valuable-based tools 
which enables the believer to operate in enormous power and strength. Andrew Murray said about prayer and fasting, and I quote, he said, prayer is reaching out after the unseen, and fasting is letting go of the seen and the temporal. Fasting helps express, deepens, confirms the resolution that you are ready for sacrificing anything even ourselves, to obtain what we seek for the kingdom of God. It, it seems that here in the last week, Lady Connie, I have been experiencing a gripping within my own soul that, has not, that I have not been satisfied with just having a glimpse of God's power. More and more, it seems that God is confirming for me the value of fasting. I believe that if we walk a temple, seek the Lord with our whole hearts, our minds, our body, and our soul, there will be a shift in the heavenlies. I believe that if we hunger and thirst for a deeper relationship with God, we walk a temple can experience the same breakthrough as that of Azusa Street. Is there anybody here who desires to go deeper in Christ? Is there anyone, is it that we're just satisfied with where we are? Is this Walker Temple enough for us today? Is there anybody who really wants to say, I want to see the miraculous move of Jesus Christ? Am I the only one in the church who desire to see miracles, signs, and wonders? I know that we have said that music is a part of the worship service, and it is. And I love to hear Lady Daisy when she says, what's that baby's name? His name is Jesus. Can't nobody do me like that. And so when I hear this woman of God declaring before a dying world that the name of Jesus is the name that declares who we are, my soul gets happy. Amen. I know that liturgical dancing is necessary in praise and worship. I love to hear them say silver and gold. Have I not? But such as I have. I love to see Reverend Dr. Tima when she comes in with holiness, liturgical dance movement, and oh, they're all swaying at one side or the other. I love to hear the children of promise. When they sing, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Lord, oh, I love that. But I want to share with you, beloved community, that if there is something, if we're going to shift from being just an ordinary church, if we're going to see the greatness and the vastness of who God is, I implore you to get into the frame that fasting is a part of worship. Fasting says that I want more of God than I want of myself. Fasting says that I'm willing to give up everything uh, just to get my pay. Uh, I'm willing uh, to go without. Uh, I'm willing uh, to do without. Uh, I'm willing uh, to die my, deny myself, uh, to deny my flesh, uh, to call myself uh, under submission. Uh, Fasting uh, says, I submit uh, to the will uh, of God uh, in my life. Uh, fasting uh, says uh, that I, if God doesn't do it, uh, it can't be done. Uh, fasting uh, gives the believer enormous power. If we are the church the beloved kingdom carriers, if we agents of the most high God, ambassadors of righteousness, if we're going to see what God promised us, 
then as kingdom carriers, it is imperative that we understand the principle of fasting. Can I get an amen? If we're going to make here, here, here's where we need to go with this. If, if you are going, not me, but you individually and us collectively, if we're going to advance the kingdom of God, if we're sick and tired of doing things the same old way and getting the same old results, some things come through what? Fasting and praying. Such power was evident when Esther fasted and prayed and saved an entire nation. Such power was evident when Hannah fasted uh, and was given life to a dead womb. Such power it was evident uh, when David was going into battle uh, and he fasted uh, and he was given power uh, and, a, and victorious over every situation. Uh, I want you to understand that fasting gives us enormous power. The purpose of a fast is really to take our eyes off of self and to place our eyes on God. Notice, if you will, this morning that Matthew 6 begins with not if you fast, but when you fast. For those who have determined that fasting is not for the modern day church, it is here that religious fasting is given as one of the duties of all believers, all kingdom carriers, all disciples. Let me say this, Jesus is not teaching on whether or not we should fast. He is simply teaching us the kingdom principles on what not to do in a fast. The first principle is that we must know the danger in fasting. Jesus warns us that we should not be as the hypocrites. You know, the Pharisees. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Folk who come to church Sunday after Sunday, dress up and looking good when they walk in, Lady Tanya, and you ask them how they doing. They, oh, I'm doing all right, but you know I'm fasting. And, oh, girl, I can't wait till 6 o'clock because I'm hungry. You know, oh, I, oh, I've been fasting for 24 hours. And, oh, my head is hurt. He said, don't do that. Uh, because that's not necessary uh, because some of us need the approval of man uh, and Jesus is saying if that's what you're seeking uh, that's what you will receive uh, if you're fasting uh, he said let me tell you something it wasn't that the Pharisees were wrong in their fasting it was wrong in their method huh? they were wrong because they needed somebody to validate who they were they came in looking tired, broke down, hair not combed, face not washed, probably didn't brush their teeth. Oh, y'all know some people like that all up in your face. And the first thing you do, Brother Bean, when you talk to them is they, they want to tell you and put it on the news, on the L.A. Sentinel and the L.A. Times that I'm fasting because I'm seeking a deeper relationship with God. Well, Jesus said you don't need to announce that because if you're doing really for me, that what you say you are doing for me uh, then I look at the heart uh, but the men of God they look at an outer appearance uh, but I am searching uh, I'm looking uh, to see the root cause uh, of why you do what you do uh, you can say all day long uh, that I love the Lord uh, and he heard my cry uh, but if your heart is not right uh, if your attitude ain't right uh, it don't make a difference uh, what you say uh, or what you do uh, he said I'm sick and tired uh, of people going out uh, and declaring they serve uh, a living God uh, and boasting uh, about who they're working for uh, and when I look up uh, they don't represent uh, the kingdom at all uh, Jesus said uh, if you think uh, you go impress me uh, with the things you're doing you're wrong and the truth is not in you Deanna he said if you want anything from me here's what I need you to do oh mother I remember a song mother stringer 
Mother Blue, I know that you all remember uh, when they said, uh, 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 Appertina Walker said, Jesus is my doctor in the room. Jesus is my lawyer in the room. Uh, Jesus uh, writes up uh, all of my scriptures uh, in the room. Uh, the room uh, was a silent closet. Uh, she got to herself uh, and she had to steal away uh, and she began uh, to moan uh, about the troubles uh, that she was seeing. Uh, Jesus uh, is my doctor uh, in the room. Uh, Jesus uh, is my doctor. Uh, come on uh, in the room. He says, tell the church that I really do want to take them higher. I really do want them to see the greatness of who I am. But somewhere, Renita, we've gotten it all wrong. We come into church Sunday after Sunday. We come and not understanding that the real matter about a fast says that I humble myself under the power and the authority of Jesus the Christ. Uh, when I go on a fast, uh, it's not for punishment, uh, but it is uh, for me to get closer uh, with Jesus to Christ. Uh, is there anybody uh, in the house uh, that desire a closer walk uh, with thee? Is there anybody in the house uh, that desire a different walk? Uh, he said, granted, uh, dear Jesus, uh, if you please, uh, just uh, a closer walk with thee. Uh, granted. Uh, so what did he say, Brother B? He said, I don't want y'all to do what we've seen other folk do. Y'all sitting on divinity and humanity. Y'all the baddest church in the whole world. And I want to make a difference in the life uh, of everybody who attends uh, the number one church uh, in the number one district uh, because they serve uh, a number one God. Uh, he said, this is what you do. Parent revolution. Uh, you want to see a change? Uh, you want people to come to your, your rescue? Uh, he said, the first thing you got to do uh, is after you wash your face, uh, after you anoint yourself, uh, after you comb your hair, uh, there's another scripture that says, seek ye first uh, the kingdom of God uh, and all uh, of his righteousness. Uh, well, uh, if I want to get paid, uh, I got to understand uh, that part of the righteousness uh, of God uh, is denying myself uh, so that the kingdom of God uh, can flow through me. Uh, I'm not my own. Uh, I don't belong to myself, uh, but I belong uh, to Jesus the Christ. Uh, I've been bought uh, with a price. Uh, I've been saved uh, by his blood. Uh, I've been raised uh, with his power. It's a reasonable uh, thing for me to do. Uh, it's to deny uh, my flesh. Uh, say yeah. yeah. Say yeah. Oh yeah. I struggle with this word all week long because I said, God, how have we missed it? How 
do we get back on track? He said, it's not very hard. He said, all they have to do, and all you have to do, preacher, because it's not a, a us against them. It is all of us. All of us must come clean. All of us have sinned against God. All of us have said things that we shouldn't have said. Uh, all of us have gone places that we shouldn't have gone. Uh, all of us have entertained gossip. Uh, all of us have told white lies and black lies. Uh, all of us have looked at things that we shouldn't have. Uh, but the Bible says uh, that if we turn, uh, if we turn uh, from our wicked ways, uh, if we pray uh, and humble ourselves uh, and then turn, uh, then we will. Uh, hear from heaven uh, and he'll bless uh, he'll bless the land uh, family he'll bless uh, he'll bless in the city uh, he'll bless uh, in your lying down uh, he'll bless uh, in your uprising uh, he'll make a way uh, out of no way uh, he'll put bread uh, on your table uh, he'll cause uh, the wicked to seize uh, he'll cause uh, drug addicts uh, to get clean. Uh, oh, yes, he will. Uh, yay! Uh, yay! Uh, yay! He says, now if you do it in secret, he said, don't tell nobody what you're doing. He said, just do it in secret. Just make a commitment in secret don't get on the telephone don't call and announce to the world that i'm doing a fast he said just do it in secret he said now but let me tell you something in between you're doing it in secret and the manifestation thank you holy ghost of that which you're standing in gap for you need to understand that the devil's gonna turn up the amps against you when Jesus went into the wilderness, the, the devil came three times to tempt him. And the first time he tempted him, he tempted him with something in the natural. He said, asked him, did he want some food? Yeah. Because that is the sin of the flesh because we are human beings we are given to the things of the flesh and so we sit here Sunday after Sunday after Sunday and we never really tap into the things of God because we have not yet identified the thing that we have to have power, need to have power to overcome. I said to uh, Terry the other day, she said, she said, no, I'm sorry, it was Lady Connie in Bible study. She said, now, Pastor, what's the difference between giving it up and fasting? We were talking about the gleaners. The gleaners that y'all give Easter. And I said, well, so often we have Mother Daisy, where we have predicated fasting to material things. Huh? So when you come at Easter, you really aren't giving anything up. You just bring in a gleaner. So that which you've given is a quarter. Ah, let me, that went over somebody's head. Let me go right here. You haven't really given anything up. The difference, I said to Lady Connie, is we have not given anything up. We just brought to God a quarter. And the quarter is equivalent to about 30 pieces of silver. I can't rush this. I know we're ready to go. But let me, let me teach this thing because I can't let the devil steal it. Giving up something, such as a gleaner, does not glorify the Lord because it does not speak to the flesh. 
remember, he said, that you got to crucify. He didn't say crucify silver and gold. He, I, I love silver. Zora, I love gold. But that can't get me into heaven. And it sure won't give me parent revolution, parent trigger. It won't give us any power. Huh? He said, but if you want some power, you got to As bad as I want this paper back, there's going to be a poor, poor country. Don't let me get it. Y'all see what? That's the poor in the spirit realm. But you got to be strong enough that when he comes, because he's going to come, you got to say, give me my stuff in the, let it go, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come to get back everything that the devil has stolen from me. I got the power. If it means me not eating, then I won't eat. Why? Because I trust God to repay everything that the devil has stolen from me. I trust God. God, uh, to cause the caterpillar, uh, the canker worm, uh, to vomit up uh, my child's, my children's education, uh, my son, uh, my daughter. I don't care what it takes. Uh, I can give it up uh, because I expect uh, a great reward. Uh, say yeah. The second thing. He took him up on his heel. And he looked. He said, all this you can have. Uh, all this land. All this property. All the systems. You know, the educational system. The banking system. The insurance. You can have it all. But what did Jesus say? I declare by the power of the living God. Let me put it in my words. Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, I declare that no institution is worth me selling out the love of God. No money, no relationship, no person is worth uh, me giving in. Uh, if I were Jesus, uh, I would probably imagine uh, that he was tired. Uh, his body was weak. Uh, his attitude was almost on bad. Uh, but he kept his eyes uh, on the prize. Uh, he kept his eyes uh, on the promise. Uh, Walker Temple, uh, we got to keep our eyes uh, on the prize. Uh, we got to keep our eyes uh, on the promise. Uh, God promised uh, good to us. So, I'm about to close this thing up. In my prayer time, them I was heavy. And I heard the Lord clearly say, we're at the brink of a breakthrough. Albertina Walker said it like this. She said, I can see the sun peeping through the cloud. Oh, the storm is almost gone. The storm is almost gone. The storm is almost gone. I can see the sun peeping through the cloud. Oh, the storm is almost gone. Noah saw the rainbow sign. Noah saw the rainbow sign. I can see the sun peeping through the cloud. Oh, the storm is almost gone. It's almost gone. Yes, it is. The storm is almost gone. I can see the sun peeping through the cloud. Oh, the storm is almost gone. Okay, if you're going fast, you better keep your eyes on 
from the sunshine of God. He said, I'm going to bring you through, David. I'm going to turn it around. But you cannot, you cannot, church, get distracted in the things that God promised. He promised. Oh, yes, he did. He promised good to you. He promised good for your child. Wow. It's almost That sound good, huh? But I don't want you to get so caught up in the music and the aspect of knowing that the storm is almost over without me telling you it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost. I would be derelict if I just left it right there at that point and let you think that it was going to be over. Yes, it's going to be over, Lady Connie. But I declare, when you deny yourself, the enemy's going to come at you. He's going to send it from high. He's going to send it from the low. He's going to send it from the left. And he's going to send it from the right. But if you, if you want more, and I ask God, Carmen, I said, wait, y'all take me down just a bit. Because I get caught up. Quasi, I asked the Lord. Ife, I asked the Lord. Jeremy, I asked the Lord. He said, you need to get at least 40 people in this church to go on a fast with you. The whole month of February, we're fasting. The first week, Mother Blue, this is for you. The first week of the fast is for addictions. Anybody who has an addiction, food, cigarettes, sex, drugs, whatever that addiction is. And for one week, we're going to give up coffee. Oh, Lord. I didn't get an amen, Carmen, on that one. You hear me? Everybody drop their head. Because <laughs> they know we're going to give up coffee, caffeine, chocolates. That's the first week. Because I don't know about you. Remember, it's not a punishment. I'm going to tell y'all why I'm going to fast. Because I'm going to stand in the gap for Mother Blue's son. If don't nobody else in this church go on the fast with me, I'm going for her son. The second week we're going, we're going for humanitarian needs. Human trafficking is still real. Huh? Remember I said a fast is not about you. Now, I got to close it with this. While we understand it isn't about us, you will be the one to reap the benefits of it because you are being obedient to God. So he says in the end, he said, if you do it in secret, God will reward you, Quasi, openly, huh? So that means if I'm fasting for the woman who's sitting under the bridge and shaking a cup, not only is God going to supply her household, but he will supply my household. Huh? If I'm praying and fasting for Mother Blue's son to get off drugs, then he's not only going to deliver her son off drugs, but he's going to deliver my cousin. Huh? If I'm fasting and praying for an overflow in this church, then guess what? We're going to have an Azusa Street experience, and it's going to call the whole earth uh, to rumble and to shake. Why? Because I'm standing in the gap for somebody other than me. Is there anybody, Carmen, in your family that you know, that you know, that you know? Is it anybody in your family, Raymond? Is it anybody in your family, Richard? Is it anybody in your family?
your family, Asia? Is it anybody in your family, family Nisi? Is it anybody in your family, Napoleon? Is it anybody in your family, Dolores? Is it anybody in your family, Carol? Is it anybody in your family, Cynthia? Is there anybody in the house willing to stand in the gap? For those, if you're willing to stand in the gap, stand on your feet. If you're willing to stand in the gap for somebody else other than yourself, if you cannot stand, raise your hand. Because before I open the doors of this church, I want to know if God can trust you to go on a fast, to break some strongholds, to pull down some yoke, to destroy some yokes, to set the captive free. Is this all you want? Or are you looking for something far greater? If you're looking for something greater, then come on and give God a hand clap of praise.